let's have a look on the launcher, which is composed of two parts. The first part is the Soyuz STB, composed of three stages. The second part is the nose module, composed of the frigate stage and the two satellites. During nine minutes, the Soyuz STB ascent phase will take place. After that, the nose module will be injected into a suborbital orbit. After that, the frigate stage will manage a first boost of 13 minutes to inject the nose module into an intermediate orbit. Then, during three hours, a long ballistic phase will take place. After that, the frigate stage will manage a second burn of four minutes in order to put the nose module into the separation orbit. At last, three hours and 48 minutes after the liftoff, the simultaneous separations of the two spacecraft will occur. We are focusing on the launcher during this initial part of the broadcast. We'll have plenty of time to turn to the satellites once Soyuz has left the pad, and we'll get uh, Sylvan's expert commentary on not only the ground stations, but on everything uh, in the system, right? I hope so, yes. <laughs> All right. At minus uh, 2 minutes and 35 seconds, you'll hear the DDO call out that the electrical umbilicals on the satellites have been released. That's the next milestone to watch for. That's separation chow connector, is that right? Is that what that is? Yes, uh, that's correct, yes. And then that's the, uh, we won't really see it, but we'll, we'll hear him uh, say that the release of the umbilicals. And then you'll hear the DDO call out many more milestones, uh, the, the re, uh, release of the masts, which comes at, what, minus 20 seconds, I think? It's very exciting yeah. to, 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 to see one by one the peeling oh, the of steps. the onion, mm -hmm. things fall away until, uh, until liftoff. This man is the DDO. À tous DDO, attention, largage des umbilicaux chao. Those are the umbilicals that we're talking about. The DDO is the range operation manager. All the reports from all the systems across the space, which is 700 square kilometers, <clears throat> and includes everything we need to prepare, launch, and follow. So, so as all the information comes into him, and he relays it to us. Two minutes to go. About an hour ago, the gantry was moved back about 80, 80 meters, revealing the launch vehicle, which you can see there. Some other launcher preparations that have already taken place? Yeah, it's at minus uh, three, three hours and, th and 30 minutes. Uh, we filled the tanks with hydrogen peroxide, and this took 20 minutes. Then at minus three minutes, ten, three hours, 10 minutes, sorry, we filled the tanks with liquid oxygen. Yes, this time, yes. And at minus two hours, 55. We fill it with kerosene. So all there's three different fuels that are used on the first three stages Correct. Yeah. of Soyuz. There's liquid oxygen, hydrogen peroxide, and kerosene. The upper stage, the fourth stage, of course, is cryogenic fuel. The people in the hall here, as we approach one minute, you'll hear the DDO call out one minute. People in the hall going out to the balconies to watch the liftoff. À tous de DDO, attention pour H0 moins une minute. Oh, we're into the final 60 seconds. We just want to mention the launch, the ignition sequence. The ignition sequence is in three stages. From minus 17 seconds, six seconds, the engines are tested automatically. Yeah, and at minus 15 seconds is uh, the first control ignition at about 20% of the total thrust. And then there's a second uh, minus seven seconds, uh, intermediate at pressure check. The there you see the arms falling away. That's, an, that's always an exciting thing for me to see the arms fall away. And then at minus three seconds, the order is given for the third and final phase, full throttle. Attention pour le début de la séquence de l'image du lanceur. The DDO is going to call up the final countdown. We'll be back after Soyuz has cleared the tower. Enjoy the liftoff, everybody. Attention pour le début de la séquence de l'image du
Ik wil het niet And we are underway. Soya is lifting off perfectly once again from French Guiana, beginning her 13th mission from the spaceport. Sylvain, what went through your mind as you watched uh, oh, it's, it's very thrilling, as always. <laughs> it's a very nice, uh, very nice thing to see. Quite impressive. No matter how many times you see it, yeah, it's always the same thing. Yes. Beautiful. 300 tons at liftoff. <clears throat> roaring through the sky, that's less than half the mass of Ariane 5, you recall. Those of you familiar with the Ariane 5 launches, excuse me, saw Soyuz rise a lot more quickly. The boosters and the central core, or the second stage, are burning now. The boosters... Yeah, the boosters, they, they weigh um, 45 tons each at liftoff. Total mass is, uh, of the first stage is 178 tons. So the engines run on liquid oxygen and kerosene, as we said. Yeah. The same propellants which are used for each of the, the three lower stages. The second, or the core stage, is similar to the boosters. Its ignition occurred on the pad, as you saw. This stage will burn for about four minutes. We're coming up on separation of the boosters in just about 10 seconds. And then you'll see, remember, Soya is lifted off. The DDO is saying everything is nominal, normal on board. We're going to see separation of the boosters in just a minute on the simulation there. There it is, right, right on time. Now, remember, Soya has weighed 300 tons at liftoff. After separation of the boosters, there's the onboard camera showing them falling away into the ocean. Mm. She's down now to ha how much? What does she weigh now after the boosters? Uh, less than half its weight. Less than half, yeah. yeah I think it's 135 tons, roughly. Yeah, something like that, yes. <laughs> All right, Soyuz, is, remember, is complementary, not a competitor, to Ariane 5. She's lifting two satellites, total payload weighing about a ton and a half uh, mm. this morning, while Ariane 5 can lift, of course, 10 tons. Uh, all, there, there's, there are many differences, though. The boosters are the first stage. That's one of the differences. Yes, yes. <coughs> Coming up to the jettison of the fairing, that's in just under a minute. And you'll see Patrick Loire, head of Ariane Space uh, Facilities here in Kourou, giving us a thumbs up because all is going well with Soyuz. She uh, departed right on time. Soyuz you know, is, uh, goes back to the first days of the space race. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. She was, uh, she goes back to 1966, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, the workhorse of the Soviet program yeah. and continues working. Very well indeed, yeah. It's very reliable, efficient, flexible. And cost effective. Also, yes, yeah. I believe, yeah. And uh, which makes uh, Soyuz good for any kind of mission. I think Soyuz has done every mission possible from telecoms, to Earth observation, yeah, right. Weather probes, weather probes, yeah, science probes, Mars missions. She yeah. takes people to the people, ISS, exactly, the space yes. station. Yeah. There's the fairing jettison. You can see leaving exposed to the elements the two satellites. Those are the black boxes on the end. Now, why can we we can get rid of the fairing now because we don't need it anymore, right? Yeah, because now we are getting out of the the dense layers of the atmosphere. So we are above 100 kilometers. Yeah, you see we are 124 kilometers at yeah. that moment. That's right. On the bottom, uh, Sylvain referring to on the bottom altitude Les left, on the bottom, on the bottom left, A on the bottom right, our speeds. All right, yeah. And at this altitude, you have, no, you have neither friction nor heating. So we discard any dead weight, in fact, uh, to, to, make, uh, to maximize the launch, uh, the launch capabilities. Does that help us go faster? Not necessarily, no? Well, you have less weight, so it's a bit more efficient, yes. We, do, we don't need any weight protection any longer, so we can remove it. All right. T tell us about our trajectory now. We're, we're, we're flying north now, and we're going to go over the Azores, I think? Yeah, the Pontinta will fly, yes, close to Azores, yes, yeah. to over Europe. And then we turn east, that's right, and we go over yeah. Europe. And uh, then we will fly down over Russia and over Australia, I think. Oh, yes, the, the South Indian Ocean, Australia. close to Australia, yes. You saw the second stage separated and the third stage ignited there. One particularity of the Soyuz vehicle is whereas with Ariane, we separate the lower stage before igniting the upper stage. Soyuz is just the opposite. The third stage is ignited two seconds before separation of the second stage. Now, the lower part of the third stage, called the skirt, 
is used to channel the flux of this third stage motor ignition down toward the stage below where it rebounds, which gives an added thrust, assisting separation. Is that is that right? That's correct, yes. And I think yes. you saw the parts of the skirt being, exactly, being, yeah. being blown away there. Being blown away, yes. And during those um, 10 seconds, in fact, Soyuz climbs 4 kilometers, so from roughly 149 to 153 kilometers. In those 4 seconds, good. Yeah. Giuliano Gatti will be hearing from him a little later on, telling us about the... Uh, low earth orbit uh, operations, the first operations after separation. Shortly we will be picked up by one of our first ground uh, tracking stations, not on the ground actually, but in the ocean. In the ocean, yes. This is uh, yeah, the first one to pick it up after the one from uh, Gallio, uh, the Gallio one here in Coco. There is a station here on the hill behind us, and this, um, this station called SNA is, is, is a boat that's in the middle of the, of the Atlantic. Yes, in the Atlantic, yes. And that's only used for, for Soyuz. It's not used for Ariane or, or Vega because normally they don't fly. Yes, they don't fly in the, in the same way, yes. All right, the series of ground stations, which is your pursuit, follows the launcher all during its flight and picks up all the radar and telemetry. We'll be hearing more later. For now, we can go to a launch replay, the first of what we hope is going to be many replays, and you can relive those exciting moments just under seven minutes ago as uh, Soyuz first left the pad. Well, maybe not. We we're supposed to have a, a replay, but uh, the, the, the ground stations, you, you can see them there. SNA is the boat. Azor, Santa Maria station. Osagel is where? Close to Toulouse. Yeah. In French. So, in by, France, yes. so at that point, uh, Soyuz is already heading east yes. over Europe. So, so she flies from Gallio over the, the boat, which is SNA, mm -hmm. north, and then makes, and then north over the Azores. Yes, correct. And then makes her trip starting to go east. And the satellites will be separated <laughs> over <laughs> Australia, you say? Yeah, close to Australia. It's in the, over the Indian Ocean, but uh, it will be the last station to, to follow it is uh, for the launcher is from Perth in Australia. Right, okay. And that station's used in a lot of um, a lot of tracking for a lot of... Uh, yes, these kind of stations are used for many missions. Yeah. They're tracking stations for this purpose. Yeah, yeah so the, it's, it's an international uh, cooperation because these stations work for NASA, they work for Arian Space. Well, in, yeah. well in, in this case, we are talking about a station which is tracking um, uh, Soyuz, for sure. Then when we, we talk about the, the launch and early uh, orbit phases, what uh, they will be doing from Toulouse this time, um, in fact, they use a network of stations which are, in fact, uh, located uh, around the world, and they will use then other stations to to track those satellites. So, so, so we can say that it's an international cooperation effort. Uh, ah, yes, for this kind of uh, programs, you are constantly using uh, worldwide networks, and uh, you effectively share this, uh, this, uh, this infrastructure for many missions. Okay, our altitude, 180 kilometers, our speed, over 6.2 kilometers per second. What is ESA's role in the uh, Galileo program? In Galileo, so ESA is, um, in fact, the architect of the system. To the make architect, it simple. which means? Well, we, de we have designed the system, we right. are developing it, and we are deploying it right now. Right. So and we are, in fact, in charge of uh, making it work. Yeah. In, okay. Simply. So the origin of Galileo is with the European Space Agency. Well, ESA has played a big role. Uh, now we need also to um, to talk about the European Commission, who is in fact the program, uh, the program in charge of the program now. And they're here tonight. Yeah, okay. of course they are here very, uh, and indeed, and they are in fact, uh, for instance, they are now uh, financing the whole program, and uh, they are of course the political uh, lead. Okay. There, is, uh, there, there are three main bodies involved in Galileo. There's ESA, and there's, you said, the European Commission, and there is also uh, an we should agency. talk about the, yes, the, the GSA, which is the, Euro, the European GNSS Agency. The European? GNSS, so for Global Navigation Satellite Service that's Agency. Global, yeah. That's right. Global, say NBA. that again, say that again, the, glo the, the Global Navig Navigation glo Satellite System. Yes, from Europe. Okay, here's your replay, a little late, but better late than never. So he's rising right off the pad, trailing all that fire. We'll have more replays for you uh, later on because we have other cameras at other outposts. You were talking about the GSA. GSA yes, yeah. yes, exactly. And uh, the GSA was uh, created to, to implement 